Good morning, cultists. We did it. We actually did it. We defeated the spawn of Robogog on our first try and nobody died. It was nothing short of a miracle. Honestly, if that's not a sign that Cthulhu is out there looking out for me, I don't know what is. Or maybe I just got really lucky. That's probably what happened. In any case, we are now done with the Tenebra steps, so I guess maybe we'll just go back home and um, deal with some stuff, because I actually got an event that happened. Or rather, yeah, an event got resolved, and then we also got a new event where it said that I think people from Patax are waiting for me in my court, I think? Or was it in Patax itself? I'm not entirely sure, and I have no quest for it, so I guess we'll find out. Alright, well, we need to go back to our capital anyway, so we can pick up um, Ragongar and Octavia to deal with their companion quests, I believe, so sure. Oh, also, I did a bit of a chopping and changing in between episodes. I have given Jubilos the... Uh, no, no, it was Knock Knock. No, it was Lindsay. Yes, it was Lindsay. So I gave her the flamboyant hat as well as the Dark Master's robe, which increases her intelligence and charisma by 8, and then gives her concentration checks and also increases her knowledge of Arcana stuff. And then I um, think I also chopped and changed a few rings. Yeah, I gave the greater ring of ultimate protection to Fabrosi. And then I gave Knock Knock a Sentinel and the ring of protection plus 5. Fabrosi has the braces of armor plus 8. And um, also I think I gave some new belts to these dudes. Yeah, I still need to figure out how to increase my uh, carry weight a little bit, though. Because, um, I don't think medium is going to be... Or, I don't think 1100 is going to uh, really cut it for us, unfortunately. So, we'll need to do some more chopping and changing as time goes on. But for now, at least, we are good to relax, I think. Hopefully. And maybe attend to some Kingdom event stuff, because... Well, we don't exactly have a lot piling up, but um, we do need to uh, work on some stuff, I guess. Alright, so... Okay, there we go. So I guess the uh, people from Patax are meeting me in my throne room. There is a whole delegation from Patax to see you. They're standing by the doors, scowling each other. Each other. It looks like they're about to come to blows. Okay. Uh, Gaspar Liacenza uh, greets you with a polite bow. Uh, your Highness, uh, the old families, founders of Patax, are grateful to you for sparing us of the uh, usurper's tyranny. Allow us to assure you in our loyalty. None of the trade houses seek the Pataxian crown, which is rightfully yours, of course. It would please you to appoint a governor to oversee the city. All the four families humbly recommend me for this position. Uh, Karn Varil stares at Gaspar, uh, Gaspar with dim bloodshot eyes. Your Highness, I think the Thieves' Guild fully provided its loyalty by supporting you against Erevedi. We promise you our complete support, and a share of our profits, of course. If you appoint me as the Governor, your cut of the profits will leave you gasping. Okay, so we can appoint uh, Gaspar as the Governor. I can appoint uh, Karn Varil as the Governor, or I will send my own Viceroy. Um, I feel like it would be a good idea to get uh, Gaspar to do this, because... I think he would know the inner workings of Patax better than my own Viceroy, so sure? Because I don't know if I want to appoint the uh, drug addict to um as governor, because I feel like that's just going to lead down a um, rabbit hole that I would rather not enter. And then get fucked from behind, because, you know, they're rabbits. Alright. Uh, thank you for the trust. Allow me to pledge our alliance against, uh, once again, both mine and that of all the uh, old families. Karn uh, grinds his teeth in anger. Is that so? Very well. So, we've decided on the governor. Would you like to say anything to the visitors, or are they free to go? There's a whole crowd of them waiting in the hole. Guards, I sentence Kareel, Vare uh, Karn Varil to death. Take him. Uh, yes, actually. That sounds like a great idea. You won't get away with this. Do you hear me? The, gar the guild will find you. You'll be weeping blood. You'll eat your own guts. Uh, wise decision, your highness. Uh, the city will be safer and cleaner without him. I swear, that guy's voice changed like every single line. The guards drag away the gnome, kicking and screaming. Lindsay, what's next on the agenda? You must decide the fate of the academy. 
Okay, great, sure. Uh, Atalia. Your Highness, I ask that you relieve me from my post as Headmaster of the Academy. What? After all that has happened, I am hardly worthy of keeping it. Okay, um... And Anami Bellavara, the most famous bard in Nala Patex, gives you a charming smile. For the first time, I completely agree with my respected colleague. Um, again, her voice has changed, I think. And if you don't have another candidate for the position, please allow me to offer my uh, services. Talia, I refuse to accept your resignation. The Academy needs a Headmaster, and you're the best candidate. Animate, I appoint you as the new Headmaster of the Academy. I'll trust the teachers to elect a new Headmaster, or no Headmaster will be necessary. What if I get the teachers to elect a new Headmaster? Hmm... I mean, she has offered to take over before, right? Ah, fine, I mean... She's a famous bard. She knows what it takes, right? All right, sure, enemy. Um, and Natalia, I will respect both your wishes. Thank you, your highness. It's a great honor. Apparently, I was right about you. I shan't disappoint you either, I promise. Thank you, your highness. Lady Balavara, I wish to uh, wish you all the success in your new role from the bottom of my heart and also the heart of my bottom. Is that all? Uh, is that all? Uh, that is anyone else who can't wait to be seen. We can execute Italia Guitarin. Wow. Okay. Um. Should I do that? I don't know why we should, besides the fact that it's lawful evil. Who else wants an audience? I don't know. I feel like just murdering people would have repercussions, but who knows? Uh, Erse Kalis, uh, captain of the guard, comes to uh, pledge allegiance to his king. Erse Kalis, or whatever his name is, greets you with a reserved bow. Your Highness, according to the uh, tra tradition set forth by the first kings of Patax, I have come to pledge my allegiance to the city and its citizens, before you and the crown. I shall serve Patax faithfully and loyally, to my dying breath, and guard the peace of its streets. Aren't you confused? Why are you pledging allegiance to the city and not me? Well, it sounds like it's tradition. I point. I wish to appoint a new captain in the guard. I accept your pledge. Serve the city as you have before. The city is now under new leadership. I will retire the city guard and create a new one, personally loyal to me. Um, I think maybe, is it better to just gut the entire place? Uh, I mean, I've already gone with like, not, you know, gutting it, so maybe I should just continue down this path. Yeah, um, should I ask this maybe? Sure. Because that's the order, as set by the first kings of Patax, I just said it. The city guard has always served the as a counterbalance to the uh, trade houses, even which whichever one presently holds the crown. We exist to guard the peace, city's peace, and prevent a bloody power struggle. That's why we answer not to the king, but to the people. All right, sure. Thank you, your highness. I must say, now that you so openly, uh, wisely spared the city of that scoundrel Carnvaril, it'll be much easier to keep order. It's good to see that the new king is a man of honor, and his promises are worth something. I... Okay, um... Was that supposed to be lawful good? Very well, I shall take my leave. So letting you, uh, I say Kalisa leaves the throne room. Alright, anyone else? Well, we're done with the guards. Who else is left? No one else. Well, what a day. I see it's not easy to rule. I'd rather uh, break up a pack of wyverns than leave through another day like this. You return the city to the old trade houses. Frankly, under all the velvet clothes and pretty words, they were just plain old bandits, but old and familiar ones I get. At least, I guess Pitax will soon go back to what it was like before Eroveti. Which I think is a good thing, right? Hopefully? Um, I guess we'll see. Sure. Annexation. Oh, fantastic. So, wait. Did we... Um, is it now part of our realm, I guess? Fantastic. And... Oh, look at that. It's now officially ours. Oh, fantastic. Um, is there a... There's no teleport here, is there? Are you fucking serious? Festival. Patax Bard College. Theater. Fort. Jail. Uh, Citadel. Noble Villa, 
Everybody's palace. Right. Cathedral. Mansion. Okay, a lot of cool looking stuff, but no... Oh, for a second I was like, wait, they have a goblin's quarter? No, that's not uh, what's been constructed. No, constructed is over yonder. Dang, Nabbit, so no, um, no fucking... Damn it! Ah, fine. Someone build the uh, teleportation circle, please. And I guess we'll... Um, maybe set it up in this corner here. Or maybe there. Or maybe there. Eh, I don't think it really matters, honestly. Um, I will put it by itself, though. Fantastic. And then set up uh, Vorticai's tower just anywhere. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, we're not gonna do that, I don't think. Alright, well, um, that'll be done in how many days? Five days, right? Oof. Okay, so we can, I guess, just teleport to uh, somewhere close to there and just leg it for the rest of the way because we still need to uh, deal with, um... What's her face? Uh, Octavia and Regongar's parent stuff. Animes reign over the academy. Maestro uh, Balavar has turned the Academy of Grand Arts into a free-spirited institution that welcomes true talent. Okay, sounds good. Love of the new ruler. The admiration of Patax's citizens brings fortune and prosperity. So, good old Patax. Ah. I see, I think. Okay, so I guess if I had done some different stuff, maybe I would have ended up with a different uh, buffs, maybe? Right, and this is the one that we are waiting on uh, people to, to attend to. Okay, then um, we have Valerie's event that's going to be done in two days. Mm, but we should be able to, I think, maybe work on Octavia and Regongar shit in maybe a day or two? Possibly? I guess we'll see. Alright, well, um, do I need to drop off some stuff before we head out? I think so, possibly. What do I need to- oh, let's also pick up our, um, what's it? Our supplies, if I can find them, that is. Anywhere? Oh, no, that's my inventory, what am I doing? What am I doing? Apparently I've forgotten how to play the game, which of course comes as a surprise to nobody. I'm just gonna leave some of these things behind, though. Um, like, I don't need 50 million fucking books. Wait. Oh! That's where I'm supposed to get the thing from! Oh! That, um, Golden Golem's Riddle thing. Oh, man! That's how I was supposed to figure it out? Castruccio Irovetti was born in Numeria, in the city of Hajoth Akaros. In the noble but not terribly wealthy family of Belander, at birth he was named... Oh, I see. Okay. Oops. Well, of course, surprising nobody, I um, completely neglected to read whatever was um, was relevant and just um, just uh, guessed until, until things worked out. So, uh, learn from me. Um, don't be a doofus. And maybe, uh, read those books that you have in your inventory, I guess? Sure. Yeah, let's go with that. Uh, did I get the supplies? Or is that a notable? It's not a notable, is it? No, but I do need more diamond dust, though. Thank you. And I shall split this in twain until we have a hundred. Come on. Come on. Don't... Not like this. Not like this. There we go. Perfect. All right. Put this back in there. And put that in there, too. Fantastic. Ooh, mama. Okay, that was good. Or maybe not. I don't know. Um, Are we okay with the potions and all that such, too, I guess? Sure. Uh, I don't think we need to worry about that, do we? No, sorry. Let me just do this uh, really quickly. So I will deposit some of the lesser garbage. Fantastic. And I don't think we need too many of those. No... Okay, I think that's fine. And let's leave the uh, belt of physical perfection. Great, I'll uh, also leave that. And I think that might be almost it. Hmm, ghost leather. Yeah, I think maybe we'll keep off for now. Sure. Okay, uh, don't need the malevolent scream nor the neutralizer. Okay, so that's all of my um, gear dumped off, I guess. Sorry about that. All right, let's start heading out then.
Wait, Octavia and Regongar. Uh, Octavia, what kind of weapon do you have? Ah, oh, fuck, I forgot to uh, level them up. But that's fine. We, I don't expect us to be um, handling their uh, their stuff too much uh, for too long, right? Um, Octavia is, well, a fragile little thing. Maybe we can get her a uh, belt to compensate for that lack of uh, health? Barely, I would say. Wow. Okay, well, that's fine. Because, again, I don't think we'll be expecting to uh, walk around with them too much. All right, I brought some relics. Um, token of the Dryads, metal, Sky Metal Cogwheel. Something about the Technic League, maybe? Oh, there we go. I'd be happy to trade the whole set of items for their story. Can you hear it uh, calling to us? Let us hurry. Tell me about the Technic League outcasts. Farewell, Technic League. There's not enough room for you uh, and us in this country. Captains and their apprentices, masters and their slaves, our tannists and the uh, technicians, good riddance. We head east to the uh, no man's land. We leave to start a revolution none of you has the courage or imagination to engineer. There are five of us. Floggy and me, who snatched the device from right under our teacher's nose. Quiet, smart Lyra, who knows the meaning of the symbols on the control panel. Eilis and Elam, a brother and sister, elves from Kionin, who've been uh, dealing with these star scraps for longer than I've lived. We have everything we need to turn this world around. A hunting lodge in the middle of uh, nowhere, where the Technic League will never find us, the best equipment we could steal, and a true miracle in a uh, metal barrel. The most exciting artifact that's ever fallen from the stars. A handful of tiny metal ants and the remote control to command them. Really? The little seeds we'll use to grow our empire. We fixed up the lab in the basement and it's time to get started. Why did you fee flee the uh, Technic League? Because these backward fools can't see what's under their noses or above their heads. This artifact is the discovery of the century and they just sent it to some remote storage facility and expunged all mention of its existence. They're terrified of the power this relic has. Well, so be it. That just means that the power will be gained by someone braver. What exactly does can your artifact do? Anything. Everything. I'm not kidding. These ants can create literally anything. Once we figure out how to control them, we'll possess a unique tool ca capable of copying any item in the world. This one or those beyond the stars. Gold, technological artifacts, anything we could uh, desire. Please continue. The lab is a buzz. Metal ants swar swarmed over the golden coin, measured it, and now, bit by bit, they're creating an exact copy. They move in uh, procession somewhere down underground, then return with tiny bits of gold as well as the other materials they need to uh, build more ants. With a happy smile, Alira works her uh, magic over the remote control. Once we're done with the coin, we'll have to try, have, try to have the ants uh, copy something more complicated. loggy has been on a hunt for three days now. He's a smart lad. He won't get lost in the wilderness, especially not with the star equipment he's got. I try to convince myself, but I'm still nervous. To distract myself from these heavy thoughts, I thought helping uh, Elise and Lam set up the uh, lab. We have so many ants now, there's not enough room for them all on the uh, table surface. Foggy, where are you? Get back as soon as you can. It's the middle of the night. I'm laying in ba bed alone. I can't sleep without Floggy snoring beside me. I stare into the darkness. My eyes play tricks on me. It's like swarms of little black specks are marching across the ceiling. It's hot and my back itches. I toss and turn in bed, imagining how we'll return to Numeria with an uh, army of battle robots or gearsmen and we'll live as kings. Where will you get the battle robots? I don't know. Maybe we'll create some uh, treasure first or maybe some weapons enough to outfit an entire army. With these ants, there's no dream we can't make a reality. All right, please continue. It's foggy outside. The fog's so dense I can't see the grass under my window. It's hot and my back itches so much. Lamb went out to uh, search for Hloggy. I wander around the lodge without purpose. Something's under my feet. I almost stumble upon it. I look through the window. I wait. The smell of rot emanates from the lab, but I can't open the door. It's hot. I want to go out, go out, breathe fresh air, but I can't find the door. There's something under my feet. I kick it away and go back to bed. My whole body itches. I lie staring at the wall. When did I get addicted to heroin? In the darkness, it seems like uh, tiny black dots move across the walls, creating odd patterns. We'll return to Numeria as kings. What's wrong with you? Are you ill? It's so hot. So hot. So itchy. We'll be kings. We'll all get back. So hot. Please continue. It's unbelievably hot. The walls of the lodge are covered with glowing lines. Countless ants swarm busily, turning them into... Into what? What is it? I don't know. I scratch my skin and it peels off in bloody patches. Ants swarming underneath. At least crawls on the floor, breathing heavily. The smell of rot from the lab is unbearable. It's getting even hotter. I want to get up from the bed, but my legs have been eaten by the ants. 
It, I smell something burning. Our teacher looks through the windows from outside. His face is a grimace of disgust. Did they find us? Wait, we'll get back to Numeria and live as ants. So hot. There's black fog everywhere. Ellis rolls in the floor over the floor, trying to beat off the flames. Where's Hologi? He must have returned from the hunt by now. The storyteller's head is covered with beads of sweat and his face is grimacing in pain. He rubs his temples. That is how the revolution of the five Technic League's, uh, League outcasts ended. Fortunately, they were found and eliminated before the Meadowlands finished constructing whatever they, it was they were building. Alright, are you alright? This story simply gave me a headache. It's nothing. It shall pass. Thank you, I guess? Great, thanks. Anything else? Um, can you restore anything? No. Gotcha. Wow. After all those sky metal pieces or whatever. Still not enough. Fantastic. I mean, it's not, but still. Alright, um, I think we've done all the chopping and changing we needed to, so let's roll out with Octavia and Regongar. Um, I may or may not decide to uh, level them up, but um, unless maybe we can, um, um, we have to, uh, you know, leave something for later and they're still on my team in between episodes, they will not be leveled up. I mean, I, you know, if we can uh, get back to our throne room uh, by the end of our episode, we'll also level them up, but still. Anyways, so to, not to Patax, but rather to the uh, Kadath, and then from there we can go to uh, Shockbang's tribal camp, and then down to Patax to meet Octavia's mother. Right, so I'm assuming we can at some point maybe claim the Thousand Voices? But we'll see. Alright, so from Kadath, thank you to the Sharp Fangs Tribal Camp will be 12 hours. Sure, um, and if we can maybe get some stuff resolved successfully along the way, that'd be great. Or I guess maybe we'll get there before we do. Gotcha. All right, sure, um, and no one is fatigued, so I guess we got that going for us. Except we might need to buff us up in case we um, we end up tussling with uh, Octavia, sorry, Regongar's uh, Parents? Did he say that we're looking for his mother or father or whomst? All right, Octavia. Sorry, uh, Regongar, looking all fantastic with your um, wings there. Uh, it looks like this place is full of dead bodies. Regongar, are you sure that we're at the uh, right place and um, things haven't gone tits up? Because it looks like everyone is dead, so I'm, I'm thinking maybe we should buff us up just in case. You never know, right? You never know. What the fuck? Oh, we didn't rest. Oops. My bad. Okay, maybe I should have done that. But that's fine. I'll take the gold power and the drinks, but otherwise I don't want any of that garbage, thanks. Um... Regongar? Everyone in your camp appears to be dead. And, uh, there's... Who? Inget, son of Shatara, and Cole, the wolf, I suppose. Step, step, step. Um. All right, that's it. Wow, what a shitty tribe. Damn, Ragongar. Damn. All right, Mister Inget, I'm assuming is your name. Um, kind of hard to tell, honestly. Oh, Inged, son of Shatara. In the dry, dry grass, you can barely make out signs that people once lived here. Burned bits of tent, tents, rusty swords, rain-washed bones. An old half-orc is the only living soul among the desolation. Wrapped in a charred mantle, he sits on the ground, devouring a raw rabbit and tossing the bones to a dog lying at his feet. He squints as you approach, but he doesn't reach for any weapons. Hmm, who's there? No one comes by here anymore. Uh, I'm Regongar, son of the son of the uh, Sharp Fangs tribe, and they sold me into slavery. No, that's not his voice. Um, where are the uh, Sharp Fangs? Uh, you're looking at them. The old man points to the bones uh, scattered along the ground. All there, elders to children, just left, uh, just me left of the Sharp Fangs. Well, me and you. Who are you? Inged, son uh, son of Shatara, and the last of the uh, Sharp Fangs tribe. Got nowhere to go, and my hands have been feeble a long time. I sit here and eat whatever cold brings me, waiting for some kind of person to pass by and help an old man bury all these bones. But no one comes here. Must think it's a cursed place. And they're right. Tell me about your tribe. Our tribe was always stronger, braver, and more valiant than the other tribes. 
Know why? We had a tradition, mixing our blood with orc blood. Orc power with human prowess. We took the uh, best of both races. No room for weaklings in the tribe. Weak children were either left to in the field or sold to someone for the city. Ah, you say you were sold. Must have been sickly. What good would that do the uh, tribe? Don't blame us for your own weakness. As Regongar clenches his fists, Octavia places a hand on his shoulder. Easy now, let him finish. All right, what happened to the uh, sharp fangs? Dead, all dead. Chieftain's son destroyed them, see? Chieftain Agden, may he feast eternally with Gorum. He didn't want anyone else's kid to become chieftain after him, so he needed an heir with incredible power. That's why he chose Gra the Dragon Eye to bear his children. She was a mighty orc warrior who scorched her enemies with lightning, boasted of having dragons in her family. She demanded a lot of gold for it, but she delivered more than she promised. She had not child, one child but twins. Agden thought a while on what to do, then wisely decided that a tribe doesn't need two chieftains. Sold the weakened one to someone uh, from the city to get back some gold he uh, spent. Started raising the second one, Stragar, to be our new chieftain. The boy was all right, deft, cunning, strong, and he knew how to uh, use dragon charms. Could strike an elk with lightning from his hands when he was knee high. But there must have been uh, too much orc and dragon blood in him, and too little human. Older he got, the more, well, you know. The old man knocks his head with a bony knuckle. Had a temper like a dragon. If something went wrong, he'd start fighting right off. Couldn't tell his tribesfolk from strangers, and he'd shoot lightning at the uh, tiniest provocation. Was always cocky to his father, too. Called them names, screaming about how his how the chieftain sold his brother, saying he'd look for him and return him to the tribe. In a word, crazy. Anyone else would have been happy that the uh, chieftain's mantle, the one I wear now, ahem, anyone else would have been happy to, uh, to be getting the mantle, especially with no rivals for it. But he was stubborn, wanted his brother back, no matter what. Then one time, Agden grew tired of Stragar's whims, decided to teach him a lesson, as a father does, knocked him a couple of times with a long rod, and that was it. Boy screamed like the hells, and his eyes flared blue. Started shooting lightning all around. It was terrifying. I still see it in my sleep. Flame, smoke, lightning, and come everywhere. I mean, lightning everywhere. Uh, tents and burning. Uh, tents burning one after another. I was too old to fight. So I hid behind a hillock to stay out of the way and uh, masturbate gently as I deal with my frustration. Some of the others, they went at him with swords and they all died. No one survived. Even the little ones were burned alive. The youngins, they've all been killed. Oh man, the youngins. He took, uh, took as good as he gave though, died of wounds soon after, and that was the end of the sharp fangs. Rigongar looks at the bones scattered in the grass, baffled. Brother. He sounds like a nice guy, best in his tribe, a lot like you. I wish I could have met him. Uh, me too. Uh, what do you say, Ragongar? Bro, well, what is there to say? The half-orc looks across the bones scattered in the grass. That'd be a hunt here. Uh, let's get these uh, jerks a proper burial at least. Okay, sure. Whoa, that is a big stack of rocks. Well, now that you've done all the uh, heavy lifting, I guess I can walk around now and pretend that I'm not actually injured. Lad, you're Stragar's brother? A chieftain's second son? This is yours, then. The old man dropped the charred mantle from his shoulders, holding out to Ragongar. Tribe might be gone, but the chieftain's mantle is yours by right. After a moment of hesitation, Ragongar accepts the mantle. Thanks, old man. May the gods grant your soul's peace. Ragongar looks at you. Let's go. Nothing left to do here. The half-orc turns and walks away from the burned settlement without looking at anyone. Okay, that... What, what the... Rigon got what... Where are you going? Bitch, you're out of my team! Why? Why, Rigon guard? What? Dude! Who am I gonna bring to Patax to uh, fucking meet with Octavia's mother, man? He just fucking left! What a bitch! He just left his girlfriend, wife, or, and just fucking buggered off to God knows where. What the hell? Buddy, we need you to carry shit. Unbelievable. Oh no, he's still here. What the fuck was that? Okay, well, Regongar, don't do it again, please. Um, but I'm gonna see if maybe we can go see Octavia's mother before we end the episode. Yeah, because I'm expecting this to not take too long, hopefully. So that'll take about 13 hours. That's fine. And just in case some kingdom event gets resolved in between, I will do my best. Come on, can we please get lucky for whatever's gonna get resolved? And there's someone along the road. Um, is it Mr. Boney McGee? Let's see. 
Are you Boney McGee? Um, Boney? What's in wait for me? Where are you? Where is Boney? Oh, Goblin Merchant. Ah, I see. Okay. Um, do you have anything interesting, or that's it? That's 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 great. Um, actually, do I have supplies? I should be able to tell by descending weight. I don't. Wow. Okay. Um, should I maybe get some supplies? Uh, I don't think that's really necessary right now. No, and I think the only reason why we're not currently over encumbered is because we don't have the uh, supplies in our inventory, I guess. All right. Um, so I think the event with uh, what's her face is going to get resolved now, most likely. So I guess what we'll do is may we have a moment of respite. You know what? Maybe we should end the episode, and then we. Um, I guess I can maybe go to Patax in between episodes and pray for the uh, event to get resolved uh, properly. And then I will also level up Ragongar and Octavia off camera. And then, yeah, we'll just do that, I guess. So we'll do Octavia's uh, companion quest in our next episode, and then we'll go speak to Ragongar, I suppose, because that's done with, I guess. Fantastic. Alright, so for now, thanks for watching and have a good breakfast.